Today we're going to talk about fibroids. Why are we going to talk about fibroids? Because they're very controversial. The reason that they are controversial is that different treatment options are offered to patients despite most of them lacking any evidence. So what I would like to clear out in the first part of my talk is that some of the beliefs that are associated with fibroids that are wrong. Number one, fibroids may be cancer. The risk of cancer in a fibroid is extremely, extremely small. So it's less than 1% overall and only one in two to 3,000 patients who are premenopausal will have a fibroid that will harbor abnormal cells. And in postmenopausal patients, this rate is about one in three to 400. And sometimes it's quoted as less, but this should be a fair estimate of a fibroid that may be cancerous. So indication for operation just for suspicion of cancer is unfortunately not true. So the second wrong belief about fibroids is that fast growing fibroids may be abnormal and may be cancerous. There are studies that have been done maybe 20 years ago that showed that despite a fibroid that is growing fast, the chances of that fibroid having abnormal cells within it is very, very low. So in a series of over 1,000 patients, the patients were compared in regards to growth of the fibroid, patients who had slow growing fibroids or fast growing fibroids, and the chances of cancer in these fibroids were not different. So uh, proposing surgery to a patient just for a fast growing fibroid does not appear to be appropriate. So this is number two. And number three, if you have a fibroid, it may cause eventually symptoms, it may cause pain, or otherwise it may necessitate surgery. So why not remove it when we see the fibroid? The fibroids usually do not cause any symptoms unless they are located within the uterine cavity, which then may cause bleeding. Otherwise, fibroids are usually symptomless. The most common symptom associated with a fibroid may be pain due to degeneration, bleeding, pressure on neighboring organs, or infertility. So if the patient does not have any symptoms that I have just listed previously, then uh, operation is usually not indicated. I would like to show how fibroids grow inside the uterus and which ones are the ones that we need to remove. So let's draw a sketch of the uterus over here. So this is the muscular layer of the uterus and this is the uterine cavity. This is the place where actually menstruation happens. So if a pregnancy does not occur at the end of a menstrual cycle, this, uh, the, lay the endometrial layer within the cavity is shed and that is what we call menstruation. So any fibroid that is located within the uterine cavity as such, this is what we call a submucous fibroid, may be associated with bleeding. And the reason for bleeding may be several, like there's not enough contractions inside the uterus, uh, to stop the bleeding when the fibroid is within uh, the cavity or they may, there may be blood vessels on top of the fibroid which may bleed occasionally and usually bleeding with fibroids are associated with increased menstrual blood flow. So the other fibroids may be located within the muscular layer of the uterus and these are called intramural fibroids. Usually they do not cause symptoms unless they hinge on the endometrium and then they may cause bleeding or infertility. Most of the fibroids actually grow to the outside of the uterus and these are called subserous fibroids. As such, 
and some of them may be pedunculated, meaning attached to the uterus with a very uh, small stalk. These are very easy to remove, but they are usually symptomless. These are also easy to remove, but usually they do not cause any symptoms unless they grow to very large dimensions. So overall, fibroids rarely necessitate surgery. Uh, the indications for surgery should be limited to patients who have increased amount of bleeding due to fibroids which may not be controlled otherwise or fibroids that may be the reason for infertility this is a point of discussion actually not all fibroids are going to be the reason for infertility unless all of the investigations that are done on an infertile couple do not yield any positive results then one may attribute the reason of infertility to the presence of the fibroid but this is usually not the case so if no reason for infertility can be found that fibroid can be removed but this should be adequately discussed with the patient uh, prior to surgery most of the fibroids can be removed by laparoscopy uh, the ones that are located within the uterine cavity what we call Submucous fibroids can be removed by hysteroscopy. Hysteroscopy meaning if you if we can enter the uterus with a very thin telescope and then we can pass ancillary instruments uh, from this telescope entering the uterine cavity, shaving the fibroid and then uh, removing all of the fragments. The other fibroids that are located intramurally or Subserous fibroids can be usually removed by laparoscopy unless there are certain limitations that may be associated with the size and the number of fibroids. And if you have very large fibroids and especially many fibroids inside the uterus, let's say 10, 15, 20 fibroids, then doing laparoscopy becomes pointless because it will unnecessarily prolong the duration of the procedure. Then the patient is best served uh, by open uh, surgery. Thank you.